All right, match analysis. Full disclosure, we've done the first four already and then I decided to video it because I think it's cool. All right, this is what I have, ready? Number one, set piece, FK, what does that mean? Free kick. All right, and then uh, we already talked about it. And then I have a, I have a rectangle with a curved arrow into the upper left corner. What's that about? Upper V. What happened? Rapino shot it, and it. So nervous. What are you nervous about? There's nobody here. <laughs> Gosh, I mean, like it's crazy. Just, just think about how, like, your anxiety right now is is because somebody might judge you, and think. And, and like, you can't even talk about it like normally. You just explained this whole thing to me. Don't forget, you have great editing skills. You can edit all this stuff out. But like, what is, so, okay, so we have a set piece. We have Rapino going upper V. What's, what advantage does the US physically have over Japan? Japan is shorter than them. Mm -hmm. So on set pieces, they might look to do what? chip it over them mm -hmm. over the keeper good even if there is no shot on goal they might beat them high um i have unforgivable yellow why what's going on there what happened what why, how why was the free kick taken Oh my gosh, this is awful. You gotta put a headband on. You gotta like, you can't well, speak. Maybe it's like- Maybe don't repeat what you've already done. Just start at, no, start at the next one. It's story. too much. Like you have to understand what, this is, you need to know this about yourself. You put this pressure on yourself in a game, in a toilet paper challenge, in a whatever, and then your attitude changes. How like, Think about how closed off and like inside. Look at look at your whole body. Look at your body language right now. You're like trying to crawl into your jacket like a turtle shell. And all you're doing is telling me something that you've already told me. It was fun. It was cool. And now it's like, oh, anything but this. You understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. So how would we change that? We have confidence in the Lord, right? Who are, does it matter? Does it, does it matter in the long run? Do you know who you are in the Lord? Like, whether these people appreciate it or not, whoever gets shown this, or if I only have it for forever, or if you look at it, it's for you to remember your confidence. I don't want you to remember that. You know, I want you to understand how much you know at such a young age and how you're able to talk about the game. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. I want you to take your headband off. Take it off. Why? Because I don't care. You need to... Who cares about your hair? Okay, we'll start where we left off. Alright, so... We had, we were talking about Crystal Dunn, great defending in the box. Um, and you were telling me she didn't foul, which was good. Um, led to a corner kick. What else did we notice about corner kicks throughout the match? Japan had way more. Way more than the U.S. So in that, in that sense, like when you, people do match analyses, a lot of times they look at corner kicks and they go, goodness gracious, like we've given up so many corner kicks. And it might indicate... Now, now, will you tell me, like, did Japan pressure the U.S. more than the U.S. pressured Japan? No. Not even close. So how in the world are they having such an advantage on corners? Well, it's because any small opportunity that they had to shoot, what did we do? We blocked it. We blocked it. We closed down. We, we would risk a corner... Versus risking a shot from, you know, 25 yards or something like that. Or risking them having the ball out there or even inside the 18. So we would rather concede a corner. Now why, if that was in the pre-game, like, discussion with the coach. 
Like, listen, in this situation, when we'd rather have a corner, here is why. What might be a reason why they prefer a corner when they're playing against Japan? On corners, how are most corners finished? With a head. Oh. Because Japan is shorter. Mm -hmm. and, they, and it would be harder for them to head the ball. To right. Jump up and head the ball. So physically, we're bigger and tougher. Uh, and and taller. And taller than them, they would be able to get ahead on the ball before Japan would be able to. All right. Very good. Um, all right. So number seven. This is at 11, 12. Um, touch skill uh, yields possession on a soul behind. Okay, so there was a soul behind um, and the positive touch skill. This was for Japan. Mm. Do you remember that? Yeah, I have it right here. Mm-hmm. They have soul behind with a little arrow and then a triangle because they passed around the U.S. Uh -huh. They're passing to escape. Passing yeah, to escape. Escape the pressure and then they got a chance to cross it back mm -hmm. on that's good and um is it important to notice the things that the losing team does well yeah right all of it can be a learning you know we're not are we watching this as fans sometimes but we watch soccer just the same way that i watch baseball to analyze it so this is good this little match analysis so that great touch skill uh leads to um a like retaining possession you know rather than losing it mm -hmm. uh all right at 1206 that's the next one i have um team communication after loss of possession stay in the pocket Ertz is directing the whole time mm -hmm. tell me what that's about um Ertz played the ball through a split and whoever else i don't remember who but whoever else was on the Outside didn't run into the pocket or the split, and so when it's played it, it just went out of bounds. Mm -hmm. So it seemed to me that the ball was played to a spot where the defender would have had to to hold up and not run through this, like not run past the defender. In my understanding, that's what a split is. So I feel like you know we'll watch it again. Break, like more than one. Right. I feel like our defensive lines. I feel like where Ertz played it was 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 behind her teammate. Um, where she wanted her to stay in the pocket, not run to the pocket, which would be beyond the defender and then play a split. I think she was just trying to pass it into a safe, you know, to a safe spot. So this is where we have to recognize something that you, you were learning when you were five years old with Jessica, and that's that triangle. You have to keep that triangle. Um, and because this girl ran straight to her defender, Ertz had nowhere to pass the ball except to where the triangle should be. And this girl, at such an elite level, she should know she's got to be back there. But... Is there miscommunication all the time in a soccer match? Mm -hmm. Yes. So how do you so how do you become one of the best? You minimize that bad communication. It happens all the time. But it, the less you do it, the better you are. All right. Um, so we talked about it earlier, but frustration happens, right? Teammates are going to yell. They're going to scream. They're going to tell you. You should have been here. You need to make this run. You cannot take it personally. You go, all right, I got that. I understand that. Um, and you make sure to make that run or you're in that spot or you defend whatever decision you made. And you say, no, this defender was doing this and that's why I'm in that spot. Let's go. Let's pick it up. Let's get on the same page. All right. At 1243, I have uh, fainting to get the cross off. Do you remember that? Yeah. I believe that was also. Oh. Yeah. I was like fainting. What, what do you mean fainting? But... Mm -hmm. Eight to the left or right, um, What did she see? Um, potent who did she see potentially going back post, making a run? Do you remember who it was? Um, it was Toby Heath. Mm. So because she could see her making a run on the back post, what did she decide to do? She's on the left wing. And she's coming in. There's a defender there. 
She has a little bit of space. Um, What's going through her mind? What What does she need to do? Beat the defender. Okay, in order to do what? To cross the ball to the okay. back post. Right, so she's got to get that ball to the back post. But what run did Tobin make? Did she make a back post run? No, or did she, she run? Didn't yeah, push. yeah, exactly. So, so miscommunication, but still the feint to try to go um, around the defender led her uh, to get a little bit more space to get the cross off. It's pretty cool. 1250, fake throw toward goal, toward, toward own goal, um, or fake throwing, or I don't know if you can fake it, but like, um, you know, she, I think it was Rapino. Yeah. She, so, okay, you tell me what happened. Um, she had her body, so she picked up the ball and she had her body this way and she was getting into the position to throw it. Um, and so like she started her throw in and then she swiveled her body and threw it the other way and another girl was running in for the corner flag. Okay, so... In pre-match preparation, do you think that's a planned play? Or why might that be a planned play? Mm. What part of the field were they in? Oh, they're attacking third. So they're in the attacking third. What is the defense going to respond to? On the throw. Which way it's going? Okay, so whichever way... The person lines up to throw the ball. So if you're in your attacking third and you line up to throw the ball back toward your own goal, it's going to cause the defense to suck in or suck up or whatever. To step. To step out. Step whatever. Out. Step out. So that little movement can work to your advantage if it's a planned throw-in play. So if we know that we can beat them on a run behind the defense to get a cheap goal this way because their back line is up, then... You know, we can make that fake and then very quickly, it's just a one quick pivot and then, and then, um, they all have to whoever it was, was running behind the defender and, um, they got, I mean, it was just like a throw in into space behind the defense, uh, and the defense is going the wrong direction. It's almost like a crossover in basketball. It's like wrong footing, uh, a base runner in baseball. Uh, you know, they step one direction and we throw behind and that person's out so it it looked to me really cool it looked like it was planned and i think that's something that they probably worked on um instead of throwing into feet all the time like we watched it and we saw japan remember that and um typical they throw it to somebody who's somewhat stationary and they pass back to the line you know and then you know they ping it around it's predictable i mean it's soccer it's good soccer it's it's but why not take the advantage of making throw-ins um, something that we can score on? If I, where is the advantage in a throw-in? Let's, let's figure it out. How can we use this to our advantage? And especially in your attacking third, that was a good way to do it, I thought. Um, all right. What about this? 1654, champion effort. Physical pain. Uh, is risked to win the ball. Erks jumped up and like flew through the air and like dove to get a header to keep possession. Mm -hmm. Or to take possession back, I think, um, from Japan. I think that was a pass from Japan, mm -hmm. and she she kind of she got in the middle of it and disrupted it. Uh, what was the score at that time? One nothing. Nope. Two nothing. Yes, it was two to nothing. Two to nothing. She has a goal to get. She has two goals to give. And uh, is the U.S. a struggling soccer team trying to make a name for themselves in the world? No. They are the best soccer team of all time ever, whatever. But how in the world do you get that effort from somebody? It's because that's the only speed she knows. She could keep herself safe. Oh, I don't need to run and get hurt and die for this ball. But you're not, like, people who have that attitude don't play on that team. Um, you are going to risk injury to make sure that the other team doesn't get an advantage. That's just how it goes. Um, 1905, lovely chest pass. Do you remember that one? Mm-hmm. What do you got? 
lovely chest pass. Oh, okay. In Japan, it was out of the air, and she mm -hmm. um, used her chest to pass it back because she. I would think because she's facing away from her goal, and there was a person right in front of her who didn't really have a like identified mark on mm -hmm. her. Um, she was able to pass it back with her chest, so so the person in front of her could have the space mm -hmm. to dribble a little bit, and then they might be able to get into the like in the goal, like in the box. So when she chests the ball down, was she? Did she? Um... Was it just to make sure to get it out of the air, or did she, did she, was there a direction with her chest? Did she direct the ball with her chest? Or do you remember, or do you know? I just remember her stepping up and then, like, going like this with her chest. Okay. So here's the deal with getting the ball out of the air and winning balls. With, with her, she had... You know, a defender behind her, but she had space, and she knew she had that ball. So she's not recklessly, necessarily, uh, going up and just heading a ball or chesting it down just to get a foot on it. You've heard that before. Or to get a body part on it. What she's doing is she, can, she sees, she reads the ball, she reads the weight of the ball, she can chest it down. Uh, she sees a, a teammate of hers in front of her, and she can chest, chest the ball down with direction, and it serves as a pass to keep possession. Um, that's what I was most impressed with. It was a, it was a great chess pass. All right, 2040. Um, let's see. I have Japan. I have two eyes. And then I have for blindside run. Oh, so the two eyes must mean look. For blindside run behind center half. Do you know what that is? Okay, so one of the things that I noticed that's a part of a match analysis, is that I can listen to the experts. So I can listen to the people who are talking, the analysts who are talking about the game, and I think they could have talked a little bit more. But um, one of the things that I really like that they pointed out is that they noticed that Japan was trying to hit what, are, what apparently are called blindside runs. Um, so behind the center half. So they're trying to catch, it, it's a good idea, uh, we do something similar in baseball with, with a. Uh, I'll, I'll explain it in baseball terms. So if there's a runner on third base, mm -hmm. and there's a left-handed pitcher, can the left-handed pitcher see the runner on third base? Um, no, because he's no, facing this. Way. Right, because he's Not facing the other direction, right? So yes, he can turn his head. He can maybe possibly see, but if he turns his head this way, at that moment, what could the runner on third base do? run right he can go steal home he can do a lot of different things so that's to me that's a blindside run so where the u.s defender cannot see a person behind her making a run the person facing the goal can see can see it and then they try to find that and they try to play that and they try to sneak it in i also noticed they said something about japan always wanting to have a perfect goal and I think that's the biggest error. I mean, I know nothing. I know nothing. But in youth soccer, the thing that I see is like there is there is not – it's different from when I was a kid playing soccer. Our goal was to have great skill and all that kind of stuff and to have great power um, and to pass well and all that kind of stuff. But, but the possession game was um, not, as, not as emphasized – when I was a kid, we wanted to make sure that we attacked um, and that we scored. So like when I, I hear them talking about Japan trying to score the perfect goal on, on a specific run, on a, they miss opportunities because they're too one-dimensional. So in your soccer career, you need to learn how to make blindside runs and see them. You need to learn how to beat somebody 1v1, which is why we're doing all this technical work and everything else. You need to learn when a team psychologically... Um, like the goalkeeper after the second goal, she's just like beat. Yeah, right. You remember that. So you need to know that's the time when you, a lot of people use this phrase, you step on their necks. You're out for blood. You make it hurt. You score 10 more. You keep it on. Um, now, the U.S. at somewhere in here, I think we wrote it down, but um, we got, oh, on Japan's goal. 
right? Japan scored a goal because the U.S. Started slowing down. Right. Somebody got hurt and, like, stopped playing, started to pay attention to an injury. And, yeah, they were in their third. They are attacking third when the injury happened. But it allowed allowed Japan to play the ball up the field very so quickly. I wrote U.S. In, at 57 in the late. Mm -hmm. I wrote U.S. jogging slash walking. Yes. And then Japan took advantage and passed it. They, they were able to dribble and pass it back negative right. onto the top of the 18, and then they had a shot and they scored. That's correct. That's perfect. And I didn't write that down because I only did 25 minutes of the match, so that's good. But this is what I want you to know, too, is that um, Japan in your world is like the Slammers or North or uh, the Blues. I mean, like, they're all good teams that are playing in the, in, you know, that the U.S. is playing against. So if you are not at your best, they can, they can score on you. They can score on you very quickly. You can find yourself, you know, at the end of, of the game going, how did this happen? Well, it happened because for a moment, we weren't... Yeah, it was only like less than five minutes yeah. before and giving their all. It wasn't yeah, even it five was, minutes. It yeah. was less than, than probably 30 seconds. That, you and know, they just they allowed... Totally yeah. just like took advantage of it and they're like, oh, they're not so, running anymore. They're so remember, we just talked about the goalkeeper, right? After the, after the second goal and how she was just like... Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Well, what what do you think the goalkeeper's attitude was when they scored, when the score was two to one? Well, now she's back up, motivated to stop anything because they have a chance. They have a chance, right? Do you ever want to give a team a chance? No. no. Do you ever get a chance to be tired, to be hurt, to not hustle? No, you don't, because at that moment. A good team doesn't care if you're hurt, doesn't care if you're tired, they're going to dribble around you and they're going to find their teammates and you're going to have left somebody else out of position or made somebody else try to recover where you should have been and then it's a goal. So now against bad teams, you have to have the, against bad teams, I think we watched a game a while ago where U.S. scored like 11 goals or oh, something yeah. it like was that. Like, it was like 17. Okay. So when I remember I watched it at um, Reese's house. Okay. And the girls who got yeah, bored and right. they started swimming and I'm like, that's seventeen and they're all like, What? This is this is the um this is the lesson to be learned from that. When you are um playing against a team that you should beat, right? Everybody knows that it's not a secret. It doesn't matter. Should is, is, should win, we should beat this team, is like your biggest enemy. You have to go out there and you have to leave no doubt. So when you are playing a team that's inferior to you, um, it is not the time to play your substitutes or to play like, you know, like, um, let's try something new today. Or maybe it is, but maybe... But for me, as a baseball coach, those are games that have to be wins. I cannot lose a game against the team I'm not supposed to lose to. Um, unless... Now, from a coach's perspective, you need to listen, okay? So, from a coach's perspective, there are games that that we can lose, Okay? And in, the, in reality, it's not a loss in my mind. Yeah, the score might be different. For instance, we lost a game 7-6 to six against Sage Oak a long time ago. But I had, a I had a kid on my team who wanted, he wanted to pitch. And, all right, dude, you need to know that this is not the plan for the season. But if you are, if you're good enough to to play and to be that person, then it's it's a benefit for our team. So you have to have those opportunities to play people, to see what your team is or to see what your to team see is made of. another player that could be a starter? It's not or just like... to see if they could be a starter, but it's to, to, like from a coach's perspective, it's to make sure everybody has an opportunity to compete so that everybody can come together as a team so you can support one another. 
So, so like, when someone takes your spot, it's hard unless you guys are great teammates and great friends and whatever, and you, you're pulling for one another to do well. And you know that that's the attitude. Like, like in my opinion, coaches should explain that. Hey, this is competitive. You, you know, we want, we want everybody to be great. There should, there should be no drop off in this position. Okay. So anyway, um, so you have the U S score 11 goals, one game and, you know, nearly like make this one close because they took, took a little bit of time off. Um, you don't want to do that. Um, all right. We're almost done with the only part that I need to talk about. And then you can talk. Um, number five, O'Hara. Defending like a guard dog. Okay, at 2420 or 2344 to 2420. I mean, she was almost pulled out of position, going for a ball that went over her head. Remember that? And what'd she do? She sat back down and delayed and got back, and her feet were like crazy. They were like, they were like, like she was on her toes. She's on her toes. She's defending. She's in an athletic position. She's down. Her head's swiveling. The ball is 30 yards away from her, and she is looking as if she's under attack, like somebody's shooting her with bullets. Like she is, she's not standing there watching the ball on the other side of the field, not moving in position, not ready for something to happen. She's ready for anything to happen from any direction. Someone's going to make her run. The ball's going to be served in here. Uh, you know, she's, I don't even think she was delaying anyone. I think she saw the ball was over her head and she sunk back and said, this is the thing. This is how we can be beat right now in, in the box here. And I'm not going to allow that to happen. I'm not going to allow a little chip shot over my head as I'm running over the ball and get to, I don't know what she's thinking, but you know, she's going to make sure to defend her home and no one's getting in there. You know, I, I, I mean, if I can make memes and stuff. I would put like a machine gun in her hand and like she's just like in front of her house defending her house or, you know, she's not going to let anybody in. She's going to kill you before she's going to let you in her into her goal. Now, later on when that 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 goal that Japan scored, I think she had some culpability there. So that means responsibility. So can she make can you defend great at one time? Make a mistake in another time, maybe. But it was really a good goal. It was a good goal. Um, all right, so keeper, 25-53. This is my last one. Uh, keeper, poor ball. And <laughs> press Barry's bad team. Remember, this is exactly what we were just talking about. So you, when you play on an elite team, you have to make mistakes hurt. You can't miss. I tell Blake that in baseball. You can't miss. You cannot let a bad team get away with bad play. You have to punish that bad play. So if you know that there is a girl who is not very good on a team, then we're going to target that girl. We're going after her. And if we know that their coach is abrasive, like one of the programs in the area might, might have some, some coaches who are really abrasive, well, what do we want to do? We want to get those girls upset with each other. And we want to have the best time in our lives as the Legends team. And then everybody gets mad and they look at Legends and they go, oh my gosh, they're having so much fun and they're killing us and, they're, and their coach isn't screaming at them and we're just getting screamed at, screamed at, and screamed at, and screamed at, and screamed at. You know, this is no fun. You know, and that's, that's how um, when, you, when you play a bad team, like press burying like what is this gift what kind of a kick is this you know the goalie's weak punt or whatever or yeah. pass and i have weak punt rapino brought it down and then an arrow oh that's pressed, right and then pressed, it was rapino and then pressed swiveled and scored and she chipped that's it. right that's good i forgot that rapino is the one who saw her and quickly boom puts the ball in the middle there's nobody around now, there was something else I noticed that the analyst said during that time. They said that she turned the wrong way. She could have... So instead of turning toward goal, she kept her back facing Press. away from goal. Press. Yeah. And, but what that did, in their minds, is that they, it disguised the little dink. 
the possibility of her making a quick turn and shooting over the, over the keeper. Now, what else about the Japan's keeper? What do we know? She's short. She's short, and she's always off her line. Off her line. So if press could feel that. Now you can't be thinking about it. You know, it's got to like. Yeah, it's a chip. I wrote chip because she chipped it over her head, and it's like just in the goal. Right. You have to know, like you have to feel that. You have to. That has to be running through you, like the blood in your veins, um, where the situation. It just it doesn't surprise you. You don't have to think about it. It just oh, I'm open chip. It's goal. It's a goal. Oh, this is a goal. This is a goal. I think she knew before she shot. Um, it was it was good. All right. What else do you have? Mm. I have a lot of things. Mm. We're at twenty-five fifty-three. So number seventeen. Right times on all seventeen. Yeah. Let me let me read it to you. Okay. So you have GK offline all game. Thirty-one forty. You have slide to block cross done. Mm, she slid like she was. So one player was here, another one was, and she was right here. And then she was the Japan player was gonna cross it, and she would just like went like. Like, she just, like, totally just, like, blocked it. Like, mm -hmm. gave all her effort to slide to get there, to block it. Good. We talked about a little bit about that, too. A lot of the girls at your age like to, like, like to jump up mm -hmm. over the ball and turn their body and turn their head. And I understand that's a natural reaction. But to, but to champions, I can't remember who did it. I feel like it was Jules. Ertz. Or, oh. I feel like it was Ertz who stayed she and she stuck her left out her left leg out to block a shot not to jump and she you know she stayed with her feet on the ground not jumping out of the way afraid of what a soccer ball might feel like when it hits you um it's at that time it, it's it's time to get in front of the ball all right what do you have here Thirty-one forty. no heath yellow late slide tackle 4904 mm -hmm. why'd you write that down because she got a yellow card. Okay, so was there any significant amount? It, what, but it, was it a good yellow? You mean a good yellow? Was it a forgivable yellow? Was it just... Was it a bad yellow? What do you mean by a good or a bad yellow? What would, it, what would make it a bad yellow? If the ref called it the wrong way? No. So, um, in that point in the game, I think it was 3-1 to one when she had that, that slide tackle. Um, so, you're aggressive, right? You want to be aggressive. It might have been 2-1. to one, I don't know. 49-04. Anyway, uh, you want to be aggressive. But at the same time, if you're going to give up, it, it, might, it might have been... Um, it might have been in the midfield, but I don't, I don't remember it. I mean, I remember, I don't remember where it was. It was like in, it was in their attacking third. Japan's attacking third? No. U.S. is attacking third? I think. So maybe that's worth the risk to try to get a goal. Because you're not going to give up a goal by, by giving up a free kick at that, at that spot on the field. Um, is it? Was it personal? What, did she have a, a big battle with that girl the whole game? I mean, she got sucked into fouling her late or whatever. I don't know. But there are good, you know, there, there's a good time to risk a slide tackle and there are bad times, you know. Um, so in this case, I'd have to look at it again. But from what you're saying and what I remember, maybe it wasn't, it's not that big of a deal. You know, it's a late slide tackle or whatever. All right, 53-20. Japan, two overlaps run toward goal. I remember the overlap. I don't remember two of them, but I remember one of them. I thought, I rem I thought there were two. Um, I thought there were... I thought there was one where... She... Where one of them ended up getting the ball, and then they passed it around, and then another one made another overlap while the, others, the, while the other was dribbling, and then they were able to, like, 
play it around another U.S. player and get right. it to the goal. Cool. I think there were two. I think there was only one. But. No, no. Uh, fifty-seven oh eight. U.S. jogging, walking. Japan took advantage, passed negative on eighteen and goal. All right, we talked about. Lloyd will bring the hunger, and Le and Lavelle. Lavelle. Oh yeah, will bring the creativity. Is that what the announcer said, or is that? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. That's what the announcer said. Did you see Lloyd's shot? Did you notice where she, what she did, and where she shot from? Oh yeah, I remember she shot like a little bit past the midfield and she shot from super far away because the goalkeeper was off of her line. Right, and so if, she's watching she, this game. And going, if it went like... I would kill this goalkeeper off her line all the time. You know what and I mean? like, if she had kicked it just a little bit lighter, it would have gone straight into the mm -hmm. goal. And you remember the, uh, the goalkeeper where she ended up? In the goal. That's right. Trying you to chase the ball. You got to come up for it. There has to be a soccer name for this, but it's like you're catching a fly in a spider's web. It was awesome. <laughs> I think you mentioning that Lloyd like was sitting there knowing what to do when she got on the field is good because when you're sitting on the sidelines, you want to be watching and analyzing Watching the game. other games because you're never going to be sitting because you're going to be so indispensable to your team. I'm just <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> Observe what's going on. So when you, if you happen to come out, <laughs> when you go back in, you you're watching and analyzing the other team like you're doing here, so you know how to. That's actually. Finish them. It's a good point. Uh, we didn't talk about this today, but yesterday watching the match, um, we talked about. I don't know how many minutes in. Three, four, five, six, whatever minutes in. Um, and we stopped and looked at the players, right? Mm -hmm. What was their condition like? How did they, how are they? I don't know. How did Mommy, they feel? Mommy, the wrong way. I'm a jam. Like that. Oh. <laughs> Can you see us both? Yep. Okay. Sorry. How did, okay. how are they feeling? Um... They're breathing hard and they're all sweaty. They're breathing hard and sweaty. I remember and that's, saying it looked like they just got out of a pool. Right. Minutes in. Just a few minutes into a match. So that's what soccer is. So there is no tired. I mean, well, there is tired. That's from from the kickoff all the way through. Yeah, you get to you get to rest on, you know, for maybe a second and a half while while, the, while, while trying to mark somebody yeah. that's you catch your breath it's not necessarily a rest but you catch your breath but soccer is a state of exhaustion a constant state of exhaustion uh, or a constant state of breathing hard not exhaustion and when you know that there is no getting a breather there's no Oh, there's no look to the sideline. There's no being tired. There's no being hurt. Those things are part of what soccer is. Um, and it's and it's like that from the very first, first second um, of a match. And that's why I love it. Because it's people think soccer is about physical conditioning and technical play. And, of course, those are components. But... Like most sports, soccer is played where? Play on a field. <laughs> right there. Right there. If you, if you understand that if you, the expectation is um, to be in great enough shape so that the other person gets tired before you and you can run somebody around a field and tire them out, that's a tactic. It's a strategy. You don't get tired. There is no tired. Mm. There is no hurt. There is there's only, what can I do to win? How can I take advantage of this? And that's, that's your mentality. That's why those throw-ins, those, you know, um, deceptive throw-ins throw come into play because you're playing with your mind. It's not because you're physically faster that you're going to make a run and beat that girl. It's because your mind is stronger. The physical stuff is necessary to play soccer. You do your running, you do your technical skills. Yeah. But mentally, how are you developing? Because mentally is what sets those girls 
apart from everybody else. Mm-hmm. Everybody else wants to focus on being a great possession team. Good for you. Possession is part of soccer. Yeah, we're going to be great at possession. But you know what else we're going to be great at? We're going to, we are going to win everything. Every ball. And we are going to crush you. Mm-hmm. Um, um, you mentioned tiring. It's, it's different, but it's a little bit different. You mentioned tiring the other team out or tying, tiring the other mm-hmm. girl out. Um, Coach Heather has said to have the ball work for for us mm-hmm. instead of, like, so when we have possession, like like how Japan and the U.S. would pass around each other. Mm-hmm. Um, then, because then it's like monkey in the middle, kind of. Because mm-hmm. when you pass, the one in the middle has to chase to go get the ball, mm-hmm. and it'll tire them out. This is what it's I also... It's a little different, but... It just no, it's absolutely mind. correct. When, but this is what I want you to, to understand. The U.S. plays mentally tougher than anybody else. So they understand that Japan is a possession team, and they're going to try to pass the ball around them. Mm-hmm. So what is going to beat that? And I want you to watch this game again, and I want you to see how many passes through maximum effort the U.S. gets to before Japan connects. It's because of their effort. They don't, they don't just chase. I see that a lot when we watch college games. I see the girls, they chase because they know that's what they're supposed to do. Okay, so here I'm just going to run to this ball, expend all my energy, and then I'm going to run to this ball, expend all my energy, and, and then they get played like that monkey in the middle. When you watch the U.S. team, they, they know how to attack a pass and disrupt that pass, and it might be just the toe. It might be flying through and getting a header like Ertz did. But it is, sim- it, is, it is not simply chasing because that's soccer and pressuring because that's soccer. It's pressure to win possession. So I want you to watch it. I want you to watch at least 10 minutes of the match. Uh, first 10 minutes, because they're fresh and they're running you know, at, at a high level or whatever, but watch the first 10 minutes and see how many times they um, they are they're chasing and winning possession. All right, lots of substitutions in the second half. We made a lot of changes, and I just thought that was interesting. It is made interesting. So many changes, like they took like Heath off the field, or like they took yeah, I think they took her off the field. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did because I remember the announcer saying that she was. That okay. she had been quiet when they were taking her off the field. Okay, so let's ask this question. Why would a coach feel comfortable pulling all those starters off the field? What does that say about the bench? Mm. You want me to help you out? Yeah. Okay, so uh, one of the goals as a coach for me is to make sure every player on my team can can play. There's no drop off. If somebody gets hurt, I have to keep winning. So I don't want my substitutes to feel like they're the they're the ones that stink. That I don't want the rest of my team to go, "Oh gosh, this person has to play." If this person plays, we're going to stink. And if that happens on your soccer team, let's say that let's say that you're the stinky one, okay? You're not, but let's say you are, right? And whoever the best girl play left wing or I don't know, whatever, sweeper, strike, whatever, whoever is playing that position gets hurt, and you come in. Let's say it's left wing, and now all your midfielders or and and your backs. Are, have zero confidence in you. Are we going to be able to, ta- to be able to attack from the left side? No. No. Because nobody's going to want to pass. Nobody's going to play you the ball. That's and, what happened in my first year of Legends. Right. I and, never got, like, I, I think I feel, I feel like I got the ball most when I won the ball. Right. So when you don't have, like, if there are girls who aren't working this week, who aren't doing their tactical training, who aren't doing their fitness tests. That becomes, that that's what's called an impediment. It's difficult to trust that person to be there for you as a teammate. So as a substitute, you everybody has to be like, yes, 
I know this person's skills just as much as I know the starter skills and I know how to play through that person. So this is how the things might change. This might, and this is how we're going to take advantage of this person being in versus somebody else. So that when you have these substitutions, all these substitutions in the second half come in, it's not a drop off. It might be a slightly different team. It, you, these girls are the best in the world. Mallory Pugh is not bad at soccer, but she doesn't play the whole time or she didn't play the whole time in this game. Well, why not? They were trying to do something else, executing something else, making sure that everybody gets their caps in, making sure that everybody gets the playing time, making sure the team stays happy, making sure the team stays on. competitive. I don't even think Morgan was there. I don't know. It's here. So they didn't show the bench much. Um, well, you have the starting goalkeeper from last year, or you know, I don't know, yeah. Lair, whatever her name is. Um, she was when sitting there on the bench. Yeah, yeah, she she had like. And you could tell that she was she didn't come prepared to play. She had earrings in. She had a ring on her finger. Like, she might have been told that she's not going to play. That's another thing that you, you'll realize this in professional sports, or you know, when you, if you make it to a high level of sport, you'll you'll realize. But if the keeper got hurt, she had to go in, and she did, she was not ready to go in. Well, she didn't look ready. You don't know. People look different. I'll tell you that right now. As a coach, I've learned that too. Not everybody's gonna get ready and look ready like I get look and get ready. People get ready in different ways. Some people like it calm. Like I'm a calm person. I don't I don't want I don't wanna get pumped up and loud music and let's go. I don't I I don't like let's have C one, two, three. All that stuff. That's good for you and everybody else. For me, what I want, I wanna make sure that I'm mentally prepared for everything in the game. And I wanna be calm. I want to be. I never want to panic, ever, in any situation. You said you were pacing. You you were definitely pacing in the dugout on that thing. Right, and you think? Do you do you think that pacing in the dugout is panic? No. What I called that in that interview, that's a. I called it my coping mechanism. So how I cope with a game is by dance. I also said in that same sentence that I dance with the fans. You remember that? I dance with kids. That's how I cope. I dance with kids, I think through the game, and that's also what I said in that sentence. I, I like to think through the game in the dugout. I walk up and down, I have my coffee, I'm mm -hmm. dancing with the kids, I talk to the fans, um, because that's, that's the way I deal with it. You know, For other people, they don't deal with it like that. I try to coach my players to do that because I think that's the best way, but not everybody is like that. Actually, a lot of people don't like that about me. Um, but, um, yeah, I have fun. I, I like to have fun and relax. Not, no reason to get stressed out. Um, all right, Haran or... Haran. Oh, yeah, Haran. I may have spelled Header. Uh, off. Corner. And go. Next game. So, I mean, Japan has no chance on those corners. I wonder, though, maybe we didn't give enough credit to Japan. They didn't give up a whole lot of corners uh, to the U.S. Maybe that's part of their plan because they know that this is the <laughs> most probable result with how big they are. And if Abby Wambach was in there, holy cow. She was, you know, she's the best with her head. So, um, high back line you have here. All right, so that's it. 